started playing a bit and, and we started doing pretty well um, with their strategic investments. We actually started the million dollar bankroll. We got up to about 1.7 million, somewhere in that range, and then we started doing poorly. And we actually, after about a year and a half, SI folded. And we were up about, we had about 1.3 million, so we made about $300,000 after expenses. You know, it's not a bad return on your investment, you know, 30% a year and a half is pretty, pretty, pretty good. But we were actually underperforming. As a professional blackjack team, we should have been doing better. Uh, and if you think about it, the strategic investments model probably wasn't the best. Now, I'll tell you, say, you're a college student. I give you, I, I meet you, may, you know, maybe a month later, I give you $120,000 in cash and ask you to go gamble. I mean, I mean does it, is it really? I mean, theoretically, it should work. But in practice, is it really a smart business model? Needless to say, there were kind of some rumors of uh, you know, people taking money and, and counting irregularities, as we call them. And uh, it's actually kind of a coincidence that some of the original guys on the team actually went in to work for a small energy trading company down in Texas called uh, Enron. If you heard, heard that, they had some issues. Just a coincidence, I'm sure. <laughs> so, well, strategic investments folded and, and at the end of 1993, and I thought I was done. That's it, you know, I'm going to have to get a real job. Well, about six months later, I get a call from my good friend Mike, who says, you know, Dave, we're putting the team back together. You know, do you want in? I said, absolutely. So I said, but, but we're going to do things differently this time. We're only letting people in on the team who we know, who we trust. There are going to be about eight or nine of us. That's it. We'll add more later, but that's all we're starting with. And we treat it like, like the mafia, where if, you brought, if I brought you on this team, I'm vouching for you 100%. What you, you know, I'm saying that I trust you, you, you know, you're like a brother to me. And that's all we let on the team. So all the issues with SI started to disappear. We weren't having the trust issues anymore or the accounting irregularities. Um, another thing we did was we changed how we trained people. Uh, SI is very lax in their training methods. Well, with, with uh, our second incarnation team, and this second incarnation is actually the team that's described in the movie, the team that's in the book. And the team that we came up with this new training method right here, um, and we were much more rigorous in how we train people. And the third thing we did is we changed the the uh, whole way we played the game. We went from just sitting down at a table and playing shoes to playing as a team. On SI, we were a team, but we were playing individual shoes. Well, with the second incarnation of the team, we were a team, but we actually played as a team. And the way it worked is, kind of what you saw in the video there, if we were on the same team, you guys, you three would be my spotters. You guys are going to go scout the tables. When it gets good, just like you saw, you're going to give me a, a signal. You know, if you saw in the movie, there's very obvious signals. We weren't quite that obvious. You know, this, if you look at a casino, a lot of people will stand like this. This meant the table was getting warm. This meant it was getting hot. And uh, can you stand up for me, if you don't mind? So, so when, when it's hot, what you do is, is you're facing the table, which is out there. I would just, just come up behind you. And when I'm here, you would just tell me non-verbally what it is. You know, if it's, uh, um, thank you, because you, you, can't, you can't see me right here if you're at the casino. So he just says something to the casino, and then you just move, and I just take that seat. So thank you, you can sit down. So, so, so our, our symbols made sense. You know, if the count was one, it'd be tree. Uh, two is switch. Three is stool. Four is car. Five is glove. You know, five, five fingers. So it's very obvious. And, uh, you know, football, you saw in that football is... 11, 11 players on a football team, whether it's American or European. <laughs> so that, that's it, that, that works. Um, 12 is eggs. So you would just signal to me. And then I would say, if I didn't hear what you said, I'd just scratch my ear real quick. Um, you know, I'd kind of go next to you and just kind of scratch my ear like I didn't hear. And if I, if I did hear it, I'd just kind of rub my nose like that right before I sat down and let you know that I got it and you can go. Your job now as my spotters is to go scout out another table. Because the more skate tables you sample, the more I'm going to get to play big. And if you look at the math on it, it's enormous, enormous. Our, our return, our rate of return just skyrocketed when we started doing this. Because you guys are betting table minimum, whether it's $25 or $100, whatever it happened to be. And meanwhile, I'm coming in and I'm only putting big bets down and I have a, a big advantage over the house. We completely <coughs> stopped betting into negative shoes. And if you look at the math, 
the amount you guys cost is I make it up in you know about half of one of my hands. I make up for the entire investment in you know the lost leader you call it you know for what you guys are doing. So we went from a, the, the second incarnation team. We went with, from a bankroll about three hundred thousand um, dollars, and in the first month of this new team, we made more money than all of SI did over a year and a half using this new strategy. And in under a year, we went from three hundred thousand to just under two million dollars. So it was working very, very, very well for us. And with that kind of betting, you get a lot of scrutiny from the casinos. And this is kind of a fun because you know your life as a professional, and we call them advantage player. Your life as an advantage player is not only how good your game is, what your percentage advantage over the house is, but also how long you can play. Because so I could have a 15% advantage over the house, but I can only play a half hour. I'm not going to make any money doing it. If I have a couple percent, and I can do that over years and years and years, I'm going to make on a money basis obviously a lot more. So we used to have to have, you know, acts, disguises, kind of personas. Um, and if you saw in the movie, they had these weird, you know, wigs and stuff. We tried that. We actually went out to Hollywood uh, and tried to get a, a Hollywood movie makeup artist kind of make us over and stuff. But it didn't really work. Because when you're seeing something on someone on TV who's in a, a wig and stuff, you know, it may, it may look good on, on the on the television screen or the movie screen. But when you're in real real life and you see, hey, you you look real funny, you like makeup all over your face and stuff, like patches on your face, it does it really doesn't work very well. So, but we so it was almost more of our personas that we tried. And you saw, you know, when Vincent uh, when the movie Pulp Fiction came out, I used to name, I love love the name Vincent Vega, um, and uh, but I, I quickly realized that that wasn't very smart. And the reason is, I was sitting playing at my table, and you know, my name's Dave Irvin, and real, my real name is Dave Irvin. And my casino host came up to me and he said, Vince, you know, keep playing. You know, it's not my name. <laughs> Forgot who I was playing under. And he said, Vince. I don't think, you know, who's this guy yelling in my ear? He's kind of irritating me. <laughs> and he says, Vince, I'm, and I'm about to yell, turn around, like, so what? Like, oh, hey, how you doing? <laughs> so I tell you, I'm deaf in this ear, sorry. <laughs> so so I, uh, I quickly learned that I would only change my last name, and I'd always play Dave Johnson, Dave Irwin, Dave Irvine, Dave Irving, all plays just because I, I didn't want to go through that again. It's very important not to not to forget when you were born, what your name is, all those little details that the casino, casinos will, will figure out you're doing something if you forget that. Um, and also, when you're 21, 22 years old, and you come down to a table with $120,000 cash, people are nosy. They want to know where you got your money. And you'll start playing a little bit, and you can see them kind of looking at you. And finally, you know they're going to ask. And finally, so, so, so what do you do? <laughs> you know, they want to know. So I used to play the big shot. You know, I was 22 years old. And I say, oh, I want it in the stock market, or you know, I, I, I dabble in real estate. I do real estate, and then they they be quiet for like five minutes. Then they say, oh, well, how do you structure your real estate real estate transactions? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I have no answer for that. So you know, what's your stock pick? What's your best stock right now? I have no idea. <laughs> so so I, I quickly learned that I would say my parents want it in the stock market, or my parents are into real estate, and then I just played the bratty rich kid. You know, spending his daddy's money, and it was real easy to do that. <laughs> that was that was fun. <laughs> so, um, you know, so we played for a while, and and uh, as when you bet this much money, you get some nice nice comps. We used to get what's called RF and B. Has anyone ever gotten RF and B? Yeah, yeah, RF and B. Room, food, and beverage. Basically, anything you want, they will give it to you for free. And uh, when Mike Tyson got out, he's the boxer, right? The bit the Vanderbilt and Fields here. When he got out of prison, uh, actually our team just picked up a lot because we we would uh, we would play originally when we first started playing. People had this vision that we'd play every every weekend. That's just not true at all. Eventually, we actually only played about eight or nine times a year, you know, less than once a month. Um, but when we first started, we'd play a couple times a month. And what happens is when we're betting five thousand dollars, and the guy next to us is betting five hundred dollars and you know one hundred dollars. You know, casino security is looking at the big bets, not necessarily because they think we're doing anything <laughs> at that point, but just to make sure the payoffs are correct, make sure we're not included with the dealer, things, stuff like that. But when you go to a Mike Tyson fight and you've got Michael Jordan betting thirty thousand dollars here and Charles Barkley betting twenty thousand here, and we're betting five thousand, well, they're watching the bigger bets.